fully satisfied with your community event settings, let's move on to the next step, reviewing the front-end form. Now it's worth noting that how you access the form is going to be a little bit different depending on whether you have pretty permalinks enabled or disabled. I'm going to walk you through both processes here. We advise that you have pretty permalinks, a structure like post name enabled, but it'll also work with default permalinks. I'm going to do the latter second. First, we're going to be checking out pretty permalinks. How you access the form is pretty straightforward. You have one of two ways. You can come in here to the community rewrite slug section of the general community settings and just copy this. Note that you have two links here. You have the slash events slash community slash add, which is the form, and you have the slash events slash community slash list, which is the list of your submitted events. But it's easier to just go up into the events admin bar and click one of those two options. Submit event is the form. That's what we want to check out right now. Here's the form. It's pretty basic on a 2012 install, and it shows you're going to notice the exact same fields that you see when setting up events on the back end of the site. You got the title, the description, the category, the image, the date and time, the venue, the organizer, and the cost. Once you've configured all those, you just hit the submit event option, drops a nice little message in saying that your event has been submitted, and it's out of your hands. The submission is in, the site administrator will take it from there. Notice up top here, though, that I do have this My Events list, and that over to the right, I see a name of the account that I'm signed in with. What this is saying is, is this your account? Okay, well, take a look at all the events you've submitted on this site by going to this button. Let's check it out. And notice that when we go there, slash events, slash community, slash add, changes to as we would expect, slash events, slash community, slash list. Here we are showing a list of all of the events that I've submitted onto this site. Since I'm the site administrator, there's obviously quite a few of them. If I were a front end member who had submitted just a handful, there wouldn't be quite so many. I can get back to the form by hitting add new. I can modify what columns appear or disappear by checking the boxes in this display section. And notice that the pagination is showing the same number of events per page that we set up on the overall community settings, 10. I have four pages worth of 10 events. I can go to the next page with this option. I can go to the last page with this option. Notice too, also related to a setting that we could enable or disable on the back end, are these edit and delete options. Site administrators can disable these so that users can submit their events but cannot come back and edit or delete them. In that case, they would come onto this list and all they would have is this view option. This is obviously only going to be seen by members. If you're not a member and you're just submitting anonymously, you're not going to have the option to view your events because the system doesn't know how to tie that event to you. If I go over to Firefox here and check out the submit event form, notice it looks very similar to a Firefox user, but they don't have the my events list. In fact, if this user, who's an anonymous Firefox user, were to go to slash events slash community slash list, they're not even going to be able to see anything. They have to enter credentials so that this system can say, all right, I want to show you your events, but I don't know what user you are. Drop in your username and password. I'll show the events for that user. This anonymous Firefox user doesn't have that option because they don't have a username and password. So anonymous users can submit, but they're not going to have as much in terms of review capabilities or anything that involves going back and checking out the event after the fact. Let's jump back over to Safari. We're reviewing with an actual member. where We have a much more robust picture, and we're going to check out now the default permalink structure. You've seen how both a logged in member and a logged out member views the list and views the community form with pretty permalinks enabled. Now let's turn them off. Back to the dashboard we go. And I want to show you something in my pages list because part of turning off your permalinks and part of going with default permalinks is setting up a page that includes a couple short codes to generate the community form. I've created that here and it's pending. Notice the way it's configured. I dropped in the title short code for the title and I dropped in just this basic tribe community events short code for the description. And you can get both of these from the community events new user primer on the tribe website. As it appears in the broader pages list, the title shows as just that short code. But now watch what happens when I change the permalink structure. I'm going to go over to permalinks. I'm going to turn off our nice pretty permalinks and just go back to the default layout. I'm going to save my changes. And I'm going to go refresh that pages list. Now that actually says submit an event. The short code is gone. What we have done is we have, by disabling pretty permalinks and by creating this page, created the front end form manually. So if somebody goes to view this now, they're going to see the same thing that they would see as an end user viewing it with pretty permalinks. The only difference is it's going to have an ugly permalink structure and they're going to have to deal with creating this page at the offset. Note that if you do have default permalinks enabled, you turn on a page like this, and you're using that as your form, but then you enable pretty permalinks down the fact down the road, don't worry about it. This page is not going to conflict with that. They will just redirect and you'll all be you'll all be good. So don't worry too much. Note that if you do have default permalinks, we're going to account for you, but it is going to require you to take an extra couple steps. 
that's the form itself. That's pretty much the basics of what you're going to need to know in terms of using this. I am going to do one more screencast in this series that walks through template overrides. So check back in a couple of minutes for that one. Thanks.